Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to go over the nomenclature of ketones. I'm going to start with the simplest possible ketone, and the simplest possible ketone has three carbons in it. Um, many of the other functional groups, the simplest example only has one carbon, but because the ketone needs to be a carbonyl group sandwiched between two uh, alkyl groups or two hydrocarbon groups. Um, this is the simplest ketone. So as a reminder of our nomenclature process, we want to first identify the parent chain. For ketones, ketones change the suffix to own. And then we number uh, the chain as needed and if we have subs any substituents we identify the substituents and if needed we pro provide any stereochemistry or any stereochemical descriptors. Alright so here's our process. Let's do it for the simplest uh, of all ketones. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and number this though you probably Look, Dr. Norris, what are you doing? There are only three carbons here. I know that that ketone's on the second one of them. Yes, but I'm going through the process. So the parent chain here is propane if it was an alkane, and we are going to change that to propanone. Right? Now for ketones, it's important that we actually put the number, the locant for the ketone. This is 2-propanone. And you can probably sit here and figure out that there isn't actually any other possible propanone uh, that could exist, but for ketones with more than one carbon atom, that ketone functional group could be in different places along the chain. You could have a, a two or a three or something. I'll also let you figure out on your own why you can't have a one propanone or a ketone in a one position. Um, though there are some interesting counterexamples to that in complex structures. All right, so this is 2-propanone. It's also worth mentioning to you that 2-propanone has a common name that almost everybody uses. All right. This compound is also called acetone. Uh, it's a very common solvent used in a lot of applications and because of its common use it has a common name that lots of people use. All right, let's do another simple ketone uh, on a straight chain hydrocarbon. Okay. Here is an example where identifying the numbers correctly matter. Right. This is a five carbon chain. Right. So we would start by calling this a pentane, but there's ketone on it, so it becomes pentanone. And that ketone is on carbon atom number two. So this is two pentanone. We need that two because there is another compound, a real compound, three pentanone. And so we need to be able to provide unique and unambiguous names for both of them. If we have a cyclic ketone, then we start off the same way. Right, this ketone is attached to a cyclohexane ring and we just convert the, the, substit or the, the suffix to own. It's worth noting here that we don't need numbers because in this case the ketone would always be ketone is the highest priority functional group and like other cyclic compounds like cyclic alcohols that functional group is always going to be a carbon atom number one. Next example I want to work through you with you has two ketone functional groups in it. Okay. This is this has four carbon atoms in it. So this is a butane, but we would change it to butanone. Okay. Uh, however, what we really need to do to signify that we have two ketone functional groups is we changed butanone to butane dione. That, that E from butane comes back and um, just to make it easier to pronounce. 
right? And we need to specify where those are. So you could say this is 2,3-butane dione, or as in other examples, you can always put the locants right in front of the spot in the uh, the name where they go. So this could be butane 2, 3 dione. And it's the second approach that we're going to have to use when there are multiple things that can affect the, the infix and suffix of the structure, or of the name for the structure. The final example in this video, I'm going to do a, a ketone with some substituents in it. First thing we need to do is identify our parent chain. So that's our longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. There are five here. And so I'm going to go ahead and put the pentanone, the own, in here. And then we're going to, like, to number it and identify where the substituents go. And I'm only going to number out the three because there aren't substituents at carbons four and five. Okay. And we list the substituents alphabetically. So it's one bromo, three ethyl, and two pentanone because the ketone is at carbon atom number two. In my next video, I'm going to do some more complex nomenclature examples with both aldehydes and ketones. Thank you for watching.